What's up, 2K Nola? How you guys doing out there? What's up, millennials? All NBA and sports fans, what's up with you guys? Make sure as you coming in, hit that like button. It does help the channel grow. And with that being said, let's get right into some Pelicans news. First off, I want to start by saying happy birthday to Brandon Ingram and Nikhil Alexander Walker. It's two of the guys I really want to see do really well this year. I think Brandon Ingram is going to set himself apart from his class by being one of the leading scorers on the New Orleans Pelicans. And also hopefully Brandon Ingram can develop a three-point shot because I think that's the only thing that's really holding him back from being the type of Kevin Durant-esque scorer that people believe that he can be. So if he develops a three-point shot this year, man, that's gonna be very dope. Now next, I got JJ Riddick. Now JJ Riddick did an interview on Talk at GS. He was talking about his excitement for coming to the city of New Orleans, for just the excitement around him and Drew Holiday and excitement around Zion Williamson. And he really sound excited to be coming here. I think the pickup of JJ Riddick was one of the most underrated off-season moves anyone could do. So if you haven't caught that interview with J.J. Riddick, just make sure you go check that out. It was really cool, calm, collective interview. I thought it was pretty dope. Now, we all know Drew Holiday has been putting in major work in the gym. Last season, he had 21 points, 5 rebounds, 8 assists. And I think he's going to be the clear front runner as a leader on this team, alongside J.J. Riddick, alongside Derek Favors. But Drew Holiday is going to be the guy to look to. This year, people are debating if he's going to be able to be MVP. And, you know, to me, Drew is very capable of doing that. He's top five two-way player in this league and in the NBA. And I think if there was a championship for it, he would win most underrated player literally every year in my book. His health and strength has been in tip-top shape lately. He had, to, he had a cleanup surgery at the end of last year, so he was able to work out still and do his thing. So I'm, I'm excited to see what he's going to do. I think he's going to be in a position to go for MVP if he develops that killer instinct. Drew Holiday has to develop that killer instinct. Like guys like Giannis, like James Harden, LeBron James, AD, all have times in the game where they just snap and they just go off. You know, and... Drew Holiday is going to have to have those moments. And the Pelicans are going to have to win. That's going to be a major part in Drew Holiday being MVP. So, Drew Holiday is going to have to work extremely hard. But is he capable of being MVP? Hell yeah. He can do it. I think he can do it if he just works extremely hard. Now... If you haven't heard, which a lot of you probably did already, Darius Miller, my guy, you know, my boy, who averaged eight points, two rebounds, two assists last year. He actually went down. He had he had a cleanup surgery for a ruptured Achilles. And his timeline for return is like seven to eight months. So if you guys didn't know that, he's gonna be back in about seven to eight months. It is bad considering he just signed a two-year deal with us. And he's one of our sharpshooters, a guy that can easily shoot over 40% from three. And he went down right after just now getting a new contract. But I don't think him going down is completely bad. And we are wishing Darius Miller a speedy recovery. But him going down kind of does have benefits. Like, number one, this can make the rotations easier because Darius Miller is productive off the bench which means that that is going to cut down on the confusion of incorporating people into the lineup. So I think that's one of the benefits. Now, number two, I think the benefit would be that Josh Hart, J.J. Riddick, Etwan Moore, these guys now will be able to grab some of those minutes and be out there a little longer, and these guys are actually productive. With Darius Miller going out, now you got to move up, Nikel. Now you got to move up Jackson Hayes. Now you got to move up Frank Jackson. They're going to have to rotate the lineup to put these young guys in. These young guys who are coming in hungry, who have a lot more energy, who like to run around a little bit, I think it's going to be very beneficial to us. 
on 2K, Zion Williamson has the highest dunk rating at a 97 over guys like Aaron Gordon, over guys like Donovan Mitchell. I thought that was very fun to see for the young rookie coming in. At a 97, I don't think that that's too high for Zion Williamson. I think he's very capable of the ratings that they have him at. And he's going to show up and show out. Now, Zion Williamson has just been buzzing ever since he got into the league. People have been talking about his weight. People have been talking about his, you know, him being just a dunker. People have been talking about him being a bust. People have been talking about him being the next LeBron James. But ESPN did pick Zion Williamson to win Rookie of the Year. So that's interesting. What do you guys think about that? But NBA champion Gilbert Arenas has some interesting comments to say about Zion. And he said his position in terms of the NBA is either is either the two or the three. He could play at the power forward and be a bust, or they can put him at the shooting guard position or the three, and he turns into a GOAT. Now, why is he saying that? He thinks that Zion Williamson's strength and size at a shooting guard or the three position is very powerful. You know, he can come downhill and dunk on these guys or power his way to the goal and if he develops a shot he think that Zion Williamson can be one of the goats yeah I don't think he's gonna be a bust I think he should just you know they should train him like a guard work on his handles work on his three ball so he can open up the floor for guys like Brandon Ingram he can space the floor for Derek Favors he spaces the floor for Drew Holiday who also likes to come in the paint and He's going to fall right into place. I don't think, you know, he's going to just be playing power forward. Because if you think about the Pelican system, like whoever has the ball, that's who brings it up. Um, if you open, you get the ball. And that's that's what happens on the New Orleans Pelicans. They move around. They're running up and down the court. So a lot of the times they're not in the half court set because they're moving so much. Like, if you look at our team, even if you wanted to put Zion Williamson at the two out of three, because of the people that we have, he wouldn't be able to get there. Like, we got Lonzo Ball at point guard. We got Drew Holiday at the two. We got Brandon Ingram at the three. So it's like Zion Williamson only fits in at the four, whether you want him to play the two or the three or not. So that that is why I think he's going to be there. Like, I don't think he's going to be there just because they're trying to make him be a power forward. It's like, you're not going to put Drew Holiday on the bench, and you're not going to put Brandon Ingram on the bench, and, unless Brandon Ingram is unhealthy. But we do, I'm sure we're going to see lineups where Zion plays the three and we push in Jalil Okafor at power forward and keep favors at the center. I'll switch that around. Or do Jackson Hayes at power forward and Zion Williamson at small forward. You know what I'm saying? I think we're going to see stuff like that with this team because they're so versatile. But let me know in the comments what you think about Gilbert Arenas. Interesting comments. I don't think he said anything bad. I think he was just saying from his point of view on what he knows about basketball, what he thinks Zion Williamson will be, and what he can be at certain positions in the game. Now, Josh Hart, who averaged about eight points, four rebounds, shot over 36% from three, was caught working out with one of the best to ever do it in Dwayne Wade. Now, if you like me, you're also hoping to see Josh Hart game grow this season. Um, you know, he's gonna bring that presence with defense. He's gonna bring that hustle mentality to this team. And he's gonna be one of those key pieces coming off the bench. Josh Hart, I think, is one of those underrated guys as well. So, I can't wait to see what Josh Hart does this year. He had Lonzo Ball on his lighthearted podcast, which I will get into in a little bit. But as usual, you know, shout out to Josh Hart. I think he's gonna be one of our favorite players this season you know he wants to be here it's nothing better than those guys who actually want to be with the team that they're with you know that's committed to the team so they're going to put it all out there for us when they get on the court so i can't wait to see what josh hart does this year now lonzo ball and josh hart threw major shade at the lakers uh, lithuania was very depressing i went there too to go visit him i wouldn't do it again <laughs> they got some some shooters out there though yeah it's like it's like hella gloomy, like nobody smiles. It's like everybody just hates that they're there. I'm like, damn, yeah, nah, I had to get nah. out of there, bro. Sounds like LA. Nah, it's definitely not LA. No, I'm not talking about the city. Oh. Uh, Next question. We're, gonna, we're gonna edit this part out, so you might as well just tell us. <laughs> I was gonna tell us. I was gonna say the Lakers organization. Oh, <laughs> shit. Miles. 
Now, thumbs up for that major shade thrown by Josh Hart. I'm telling y'all, the Lakers and the Pelicans are going to be a new rivalry that's going to be actually fun to watch. Now, Josh Hart and Lonzo, if they're going to be throwing a lot of shots at the Lakers, you have to show what you're worth and what you can do against the Lakers this season and many more seasons to come. Now, Lonzo Ball, man, he's just been buzzing all over, been doing interviews all over the place. And I think he wants smoke with everybody. He wants smoke with the Lakers. He wants smoke with his own brand, look like. In his song, Last Days, he said that LA was going to regret their decision. Now, he came back and said that wasn't a diss, but... I don't know, man. Don't don't be easy on him. You know, you say, you know, keep it at that. They think it's a diss. Let them think it's a diss. You know, he said he took it personal when he got traded as well. So he was on an interview with Big Boy and where he talked about, you know, L.A. was going to regret that decision. He said that, you know, he took it personal when he got traded. So expect Lonzo Ball to come in this, to the season with a chip on his shoulder. And nothing more exciting than a guy who wants to get at somebody, you know. And the Lakers is one team I know a lot of people want to get at, especially Lonzo Ball. Now, Lonzo Ball is one of those guys, I think if he develops that three-point shot as well, like Brandon Ingram, he's going to be very dangerous. He has the potential. He has the vision, the court vision, you know what I'm saying, the, the great passes. He can move up and down the court. He dunks. I don't think he has the whole package. He just needs to, you know, bring that three-point percentage about 38%, 40, right at the nose. He's going to be really, really solid for the New Orleans Pelicans. And I think he's going to have fun here, you know. He's going to be working with, he's going to be working with Elvin Gentry. So Elvin Gentry loves to coach point guards. He loves to play the fast-paced offense. And that plays right into Lonzo Ball's alley. Now, Skip Bayless has some interesting comments to say as well about Lonzo Ball. Skip said, this could be the greatest thing that ever happened to Lonzo Ball. He got out from under his father. He gets to start fresh with a great and up-and-coming franchise. He gets to team up with the perfect alley-oop partner, Zion. They're made for each other. Now, I agree with Skip Bayless all the way with what he's saying. But... How do you think Lonzo Ball will do this season? What his stats will look like? How many lobs are we going to see from Lonzo Ball to Jackson Hayes? Or Lonzo Ball, Zion, Lonzo Ball, Favors? There's so many people he could throw the ball to that can dunk it. And they're going to do it in a flashy way. It's going to be fun. So how you guys think Lonzo Ball will do this season? Now, he was speaking out, talking about his shoes the big baller brand shoes and he said that his manager had to carry four pair of shoes a game to keep switching them out because they kept breaking and they were not ready the durability of the shoes just wasn't good me I don't think that's a smart move for Lonzo Ball I understand you want to smoke with everybody but you're talking about your own shoes man you, you're talking about your own brand your own business and if the owner is telling you that the product isn't good then how do you think the people are supposed to feel about that one you know, I don't think that was a smart move unless you want to do a shoe that you know is going to be mobily better. But he was just having some honest moments this this past week. Last two weeks, he's just been getting it all out, getting it all off his chest. So I think him actually getting out of the Lakers organization has been helping him mentally. You know, he's just been letting all his frustration out at the Lakers organization was the worst that he ever done. So he's just been telling it all about everything he's just went through the past seasons that he's been with the Lakers. Lonzo Ball has also been getting in tune with the city. Um, he's been doing some charity stuff. He did been buying school supplies and different things for people around the community of New Orleans. He also did the Swamp Tour. So he's just been getting in tune with the city and that's really good to see. Now, how many of you guys, let me know how many of you guys in the comments actually bought a pair of ZO2s or any pair of Big Baller brand shoes and which ones did you get? If he stays healthy, him, Ingram, and all of these guys, Holiday, stay healthy because I do think the Western Conference will be based on who stays healthy. Whoever stays healthy, that's who's going to win. That's who's going to be in the playoffs. And with all these teams stacked and loaded, that's what it's going to rely on. These guys are going to have to go hard. But what do you guys think, man? How do you think the Pelicans would do this year? Do they make the playoffs? I think they do. 
Now, make sure you if you like the content, make sure if you like the content, you hit that like button because it does help my channel grow. With that being said, man, be blessed. And whatever's good for your soul, do that. I'm out, man. Catch y'all on the next one. Can you see I do it? Can you see it?